Knoxville, Tennessee, and its tailgate flotilla hosts a preamble to opportunity, colored with volunteers eagerly awaiting an apt moment to win ugly, orchestrated no less than by the son of a fabled Georgia mentor, an opportunity to change fortunes and doggedly pursue not only a century mark, but also a foothold in the East. Opportunity, Knoxville, now. Welcome everyone to the SEC on ESPN. From Nayland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee on the banks of the Tennessee River, it's ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Miller Lite in the 41st edition of Georgia against Tennessee. Let's take a look at the standings in the SEC East, updated to the moment. Florida losing just a few moments ago, falling to 2-2. Two and two. Georgia sitting at 2-1. and one. Tennessee looking for its first conference victory. The second-year head coach of the Tennessee Volunteers grew up as a fan of the Georgia Bulldogs, the son of legendary coach Vince Dooley. the kick he's returned three in his career but this one harmlessly into the end zone it'll come out to the 20 yard line and that's where Aaron Murray will take the reins of this offense for the Georgia Bulldogs the only thing you need to know about him he is a workaholic every time we call the Georgia coaches and speak with them he's in the office breaking down tape that's why he's been so successful this year ahead quarterback sneak feels right but again I to me this feels like putting this ball away but Aggressive call on the road. The 33% on conversions on fourth down this year. Crowell has plenty of room into the boundary. First down and then some out at midfield. Got a nice block from Ogletree, and Georgia moves the chains with the first down. An early defining point from our Rick. Breaks for this young defense so far this year. I think we saw that on the fourth down. Here's Brandon Smith taking a handoff, has some room, got a good block from his wide receiver, Tavares King, and another Bulldog first down, pushed out of bounds by Teague, but a gain of 17 on the play. Murray makes a nice move and is very close to the first down, depending on the spot. Ahead this time, this I think is the right call on the road. I didn't like it on their side of the field, like it here. Crowell has the first down near the 20 yard line. A pickup of three and Mark Richt. Boy, if he's on the hot seat, seat, nobody told him. He's certainly with a cool disposition here coming in. Murray sacked back at the 17 yard line. Corey Miller with the stop. And this time the field goal unit comes in. Was a design draw on the defensive line did a nice job coming off the block. Blair Walsh from 35 yards out having a tough year but he knocks this one through now 7 of 13 on the season. So on a drive when they come out and convert twice on fourth down they kick a field goal Georgia trying to buck the trend of getting blown out twice here in their last two games against the Volunteers. We'll be back with more right after this. Starts trying to get in his head. Let's see if he's clean today. On the reverse, this is Neal. Rajan Neal put it on the ground. They're going to say that he was down first. Defensively on third downs. Georgia with some pressure. And Tennessee converts and then some. Michael Rivera shows you why they lead the country in moving the sticks on third down. He picks up 19. And this is a wonderful read by Tyler Bray. Excuse me. Third and long. Draw play to Lane. Oh, what a great move. A shake. And Shimmy, and he's close to the first down. He got that right foot spot. Lane, a guy who they're trying to get the ball a little bit more to. First down. On the reverse. Boy, Georgia was waiting on that one. Back at the 34. Loose ball. 
It came loose. Rajon Neal on the carry. That's two fumbles by Neal. Third and long here, a big challenge. Pass incomplete and fourth down coming up. So the number one team in the nation on third down conversions. Looking at fourth down right now, intended for Rivera. Yeah. And he pushes it off to the right. No good. With 2.44 to go here in the first quarter of play, Mark Rick's defense able to avert a field goal. Murray complete first down or close to it right at the 44 a pickup of 11 to Tavares King again if you're going to go for it got to go straight ahead Murray hand walks and gets enough for the first down little quarterback draw Murray Shows he can run pretty well. Got the first down. Brought down by Malik Jackson. But Aaron Murray showing a lot of savvy belying his sophomore years. Picks up eight for the first down. Because Crowell was clearly the best running back that Georgia had through the first part of the season. Two on the play clock. And they barely get it off. Murray incomplete. That pass intended for Marlon Brown. Tennessee native incomplete Prentice Wagner in on the coverage and it's fourth down coming up for the Bulldogs and Mark Rick first down and ten and the pass complete for a 15 yard gain Michael Rivera with the catch on the play His basketball coach on hand as well this year on the sidelines on second and short the pass complete to Rivera and another volunteer first down and Heather Cox standing by with the men's basketball coach he was a lawyer for two years and he decided to come back to the game second and ten pass underneath to Rivera again in another Tennessee first down in motion now sets in the backfield Poole looking for a block and won't get one he'll lose about three yards Jarvis Jones making the stop on the play he's the team leader and stops coming into tonight's game. Well, here's what's happening at the top of the hour. Tyler Bray, five of nine so far for 73 yards. Got, I don't really want to reach for it. Because we're looking at a pivotal part here. Third and eight for Tennessee. Bray fires incomplete. Well, here's the problem. You're now at that distance again for Pilardi, your kicker. He already missed from 51. This would be from 52, which would be a career long. And so you're thinking fourth down. I think this is the right decision here, expecting that blitz. Rivera has been a popular target in the game so far. Marlon Lane, the lone back to the left of Bray. On fourth down. Pass complete, and what a stick by Brandon Smith. But it's enough for the first down. Great catch by Derek Rogers. Lane dotting the eye at tailback. Play action. Bray has a man wide open. And all the way down to the seven yard line, it's Lane with the catch. And it's first and goal, Tennessee. Nice job by Bray, buying a little bit of time. Positive yard, wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised with a run here. Play clock winding down, they toss it to Lane. Nowhere to go for him, and he's going to lose a few yards all the way back to the 11. Vassar and Robinson in on the stop for the Bulldogs. Pointing minus three yards, third and goal. Low snap for Bray into the end zone. A little bit of contact, no flag on the play. He was looking for Rivera, but good coverage by Christian Robinson. And it's fourth and goal coming up as Bray pleads his case with the referee. And I think this is another missed pass interference on Georgia defensively. Christian Robinson was beat immediately by Rivera. And as he goes to finish this play, he runs over and runs into Rivera. This is pass interference every time. This should be first and goal on the two-yard line for Tennessee. Now, Bray is right. That was pass interference. 
Lardy now in for a second field goal attempt tonight, missing from 51. This one from 28. And he knocks it through, and we're tied at three apiece. But the Volunteers perhaps thinking they should have gotten six of that instead of three. Really nice job in keeping a lot of those guys in the state. Second and nine, Murray on the bootleg. Wide open at the 30-yard line, pass complete to Malcolm Mitchell, the team's leading receiver coming in, and a 12-yard gain. Let's go back to that recruit and Georgia thing. Samuel still in a tailback, first down and 10. Play fake again, going up top, can he connect on the third one? Has a man! Complete and caught, first and goal, Mitchell with the grab. He finally hits pay dirt, going long on the 43-yard gain. Murray on the slant, incomplete, in and out of the hands of Tavares King. And there looked like there was a miscommunication there between King and Murray. On the uh, end of the playing field, not into the goal line. A little surprised he wasn't running that a little deeper. Blair Walsh from 23 yards out. He's already made one from 35, and he drills this one through, giving Georgia a three-point lead with 1.44 to go. This a different trend from previous meetings, which have all been blowouts. Guys, they ran a draw there. On third and three, the pass complete to Zach Rogers. First down with a minute to go. And a couple of timeouts, actually one timeout remaining, a 19-yard game. Because you know George is going to be playing way off here. There's the screen pass. Lane makes a nice move in a straight arm. Put it on spin cycle and a first down. What a run by Marlon Lane. And he told Bakari Rambo, you better talk to the hand because my feet aren't listening to you. And now for Tennessee, 24 seconds. The clock's going to start to burn. Don't keep that timeout in your hip pocket. And to me, use that timeout, throw the fade, incomplete, then you bring your kicker on. Velarde in to attempt this from 44 yards out. And that is true. We are knotted at six apiece at the end of the first half of play. In a game that has been much more competitive and tight than in recent history. Let's go downstairs to Heather. High snap over Bray's head and all the way back at the seven yard line. And the Volunteers will have to punt from the shadows of their own goalposts. Issues in the punting game. This is Matt Darr punting from his own end zone, averaging just 38 yards per punt on the season. Hunt bounces short at the 39. And the Georgia Bulldogs are going to have great starting field position on this, their first drive of the second half. Here's what Derek Dooley's mom, Barbara, had to say in defending her son earlier this week. Son. Yeah, he's not on the hot seat. <laughs> not, not with what he walked into. As a matter of fact, that seat was burned and thrown on the ground by the previous coaching staff. There's Crowell with a spirited run for the first down. Isaiah Crowell already with three 100-yard gains in his young career. Second down and seven for Georgia, lining up out of the eye. Murray with the play fake. Orson Charles, the favorite target most of the time of Aaron Murray, and former high school teammate, makes his first catch of the night. And you know what, Ed, his name, conspicuous by its absence for most of the evening. Yeah, he's a guy who, as a tight end, had over 100 yards receiving in the first ball game against Boise State. First touchdown of the ball game to Georgia. And for Isaiah Crowell, his third one of the season. Ray in the pocket completes it to Rodgers. Derek Rodgers out to the 40-yard line. Picks up a Tennessee first down with a 13-yard pickup. For underneath that there and underneath drag route. So a rework of the pass game when you lose such a good player like Hunter. There's Lane, and Lane brought down behind the line of scrimmage. He's going to lose two on the play. Of course, uh, 
Talked about the fact that there's Hunter, one of those young players on this Tennessee roster, just a sophomore. Derek Dooley used was, we don't have any competitive maturity yet. We didn't know how to bounce back from it. Trying to get some tonight. Lane brought down and facing some adversity as Jarvis Jones sacks them in a loss of five on the play. As let's go downstairs to Heather on the field. Third and 16. Long way to go. Bray completes it to Lane. Dragged down short of the first down, or was he? Lane keeps going. Lane, touchdown, holy smoke! Rocky Top strikes. In a play reminiscent of the national championship game, Michael Dyer did not go down as he was slung to the ground, and this was Sean Williams this time. Clock when he hits, there'd be 6:09 to go in the third. They After whistle it dead. Video evidence shows that the ball carrier was down at the 47-yard line. The ball was placed at the 47-yard line. It'll be fourth down with the clock operator. Well, let's see if Derek Dooley does go for it here on fourth down. Looking for their fourth consecutive win. Thomas dotting the eye now. Play fake by Murray. Trying to connect once again. Complete. Mitchell down to the 23. He missed three previous times and this time connected on the pattern. Everybody comes back against AM apparently. <laughs> And a great run here, Crowell, feeling it. Touchdown, Bulldogs. I'm not saying that Dooley made the wrong call, but just a little different philosophy and aggressiveness in this ball game may end up paying off big time for Georgia. Point. Here's Young on the kickoff return. Young trying to make a play. And the kicker pushes him out of bounds near midfield. Blair Walsh with a touchdown saving tackle. Been long. Got to get to the 40. Ray under duress. Incomplete at the 36 yard line intended for Rivera and the Bulldog defense staunch on that series could heat up front by Jarvis Jones and D'Angelo Tyson. Very quick three step drop and delivers an authoritative pass to Marlon Brown. You try and go back to it again. Why not. Second and ten. A little slant complete. A first down out at the 34 yard line. Nice catch and run by Chris Connolly, who picks up 17. And Aaron Murray in a really nice rhythm right now. To go here in the third quarter, a third period dominated by the Georgia Bulldogs. This is Thomas in space and another first down in volunteer territory at the 44. Murray with a dart to Tavares King. His progress going to be marked right at the first down marker. Gives them a bit of a leg up in the SEC East. Murray completes it at the 25 and falling forward for another first down. It's Tavares King who picks up 11. How about a draw? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Or the screen pass. I'll call a screen here just for fun. There's the handoff, and Samuel has nowhere to go. It's going to be third and about 57 to go. And here's the other thing that these penalties have done. They've energized this crowd, which could then re-energize this vault defense and their offense. Going to get a pick down here, but the field flipped on that punt return. There's Bray, a little heat. And they heat him up that incomplete and that's going to be a flag. He wasn't outside the tackle box. And that's going to be grounding. Flag up. Touching the ground on the offense number or maybe eight. not. That comes is a loss of down at the spot of the foul. Second down. 
But now you have to get aggressive, and here comes Tennessee. Watch as he flips this to a championship. Third and 16 for Tennessee. Prey incomplete at the 36 intended for Derrick Rogers. That was uh, not a good effort at the end of the play by Rogers. His defense came out and got the ball back. Now it's about hurry up. Tennessee with only five total yards here in the second half. Bray adding to that total with a nice pass and catch. Derrick Rogers outside of two minutes. So pick up the pace. Bray downfield, wide open. Rogers in space where he can be lethal. Brought down to the 44 yard line by Sean Williams. And now Tennessee trying to put that tempo up a little bit, get it moving a little faster. Bray. Calling out the play. And the big guys up front for Georgia, they're 300 plus pounds across the board. A lot of hands on hips. Going to have to rotate. Remember, Cornelius Washington not here, one of their best pass rushers from outside linebacker. Ray with tons of time, looks underneath, wide open underneath to Lane, and Lane steps out of bounds. First down, picks up 14 yards, 519 to go on this four play drive, moving it quickly and efficiently. Underneath again, Lane. And a good open field tackle. Boy, what they wouldn't do for a tearaway jersey right now. Lane brought down by his jersey by Gillian. Matt Sims coming in in a very tough situation. Completes his first attempt to tight end downs. Brendan down short of the first down. It's going to be fourth down coming up and about two to go. Sims was the starter for a part of last year up until about the midway point before he was supplanted by Tyler Bray. And down. Sims completes the pass to the first down. DeAnthony Arnett picks up eight. What a nice throw by Sims on the out cut. And try and heat him up. He mishandles the snap. And he's going to be sacked. Tries to throw it away. Christian Robinson was there with the heat. And that's going to be grounding. And Derek Dooley perhaps seeing his chances fade a little bit more there. And that was not a great snap, but completely uh, handable. Should have been handled by uh, by Matt. And I think. You touch it around there. Offense number 12. That penalty is a loss of down at the spot of the foul. Third down. Now, if you're Jim Cheney, the offensive third. coordinator, how many third and second and longs have we yeah. seen here in the second half? I think you've got to think of something uh, like a, like a uh, an out cut or something that's going to pick up 8, 10, 15 yards to make it a manageable fourth down. Well, they won't be punting, that's for sure. Third and 27. Sims is given time this time. Completes it at the 21, so they got 17 yards to go on fourth down coming up and the clock running. And if you had three timeouts, you'd take one. You don't want to have to rush this play. But to me, this kind of feels like a fade to Derek Rogers down here at the bottom, potentially. This is it for Tennessee. They need to convert or it's lights out. Into the end zone. Caught at the one yard line. Rivera. What a completion and throw and catch by Sims. Good read by Sims. And how many times have we seen Rivera tonight from that tight end position over the middle? He was looking for the fade to Rodgers. Then you have a defender coming against that hard helmet or face mask. I wouldn't be surprised if it's broken. Second and goal. Sims keeps it again. This time getting into the end zone. Touchdown balls. Peyton. is blocked an egregious circumstance for Tennessee that leaves the margin at eight as opposed to seven a team that has struggled in the kicking game of late taking a little bit of a hit right here a costly block on the extra point no good Tennessee still with a little life though when we come back Gaff, which leaves this game as an eight point differential. They load it up on the right. The left foot, though, they get a great bounce, but it goes too high and out of bounds. 
Well, that's a mechanical error by Pilardi. They didn't even get a chance yeah. to field it. It's a bad angle. They're down in nine. Samuel in for him, and he takes the handoff between the tackles, gets about three. You really need depth in the SEC, mm -hmm. and when you look at whether it's the East or the West, you need good bodies, healthy bodies, to stay in competition here. Looking at the standings on the other half of the SEC, who do, you th who do you think's the best team in the West? That is a loaded division. The reason I think it's Alabama is I think that they're more balanced and more dangerous offensively. I think that LSU has... They're, they're getting better. They're figuring out. They're so much better, LSU is, offensively this year with the new offensive staff than I think they were last year. But I think when you talk about defenses, you flip it. I think LSU, Tyran Matthew, I think is the best player in the country. I, he, he just, week in and week out, is able to make big plays from the secondary. But I just give it to Alabama just by a little bit because I feel like offensively, they know who they are a little bit more than LSU at the moment. Well, hate to bring it up, partner, but uh, with a timeout on the field, uh, the, those divisions might look a little different in the un oncoming years with uh, the landscape continuing to change as uh, A&M comes into the SEC. From that 0-2 start, again, they've already lost to South Carolina, so they're tied with South Carolina in the east. South Carolina controls their own destiny, but when you stack up their respective schedules going forward, and a sack on Sims back at the 18-yard line by Jarvis Jones, the leading tackler for the Bulldogs coming into the game. And these dogs got a little bite tonight as Mark Richt getting the Gatorade shower with his 100th career win. Embraced by his players, virtue of the 20-12 win as they improve to 3-1 and one in the SEC. The freshman again responding tonight, Isaiah Crowell. And once again, our final score is 20 to 12 for the Bulldogs. Coming up next on ESPN2 College Football Scoreboard, Brett Cunningham and the rest of the crew. I'm Mark Jones. Right now, we send it back to the studio.